Hello investors and welcome back to Just Raining Stocks. During this video, I hope to tell you everything you need to know to not only get an update, a really good update on SNDL, but to know why I haven't covered this in so long and why I believe you're mitigating your risk if you enter in a position now or below the 65 cent range. So anything under 70 cents, below 65, even better. This went as far down to 61 cents. I seen this dropping to 66 cents, but when it went to 61, I was like, what is going on? And then last week we received a massive update. They're completely restructuring. I wanna talk about that. I think we're gonna cover it all. I've got a sizable position here. So just to let you know, I've got a cost average of 50 cents. This is a buy and forget for me. I know that this is gonna take about two to three years to really get to the level of where I would expect to cash out. Now, if this does run up, if this receives a massive run up past its you know, valuation, way past its evaluation, I'm gonna take profits. I'll just let you know that right now. So 31,000 shares, I've got several contracts, still nothing's changed since the last time in my ownership that I did a video. Uh, so just to let you know that up front, let's go ahead and not delay any further. Let's get started. So SNDL has huge dilution for shareholders. They have a very competitive market. And the first thing that I want to cover is Spirit Leaf Network. They acquired this business that is going to give them some market share, reach out, retail space that they desperately needed. They needed to make a major impact. And I want to take you back to the Q2 earnings call, which you can see on my screen right here. There's a lot of pressure coming, especially from the value segment in retail. This is what uh, Fred Rico from ATB Capital Markets, an analyst said. He said, could you give us some color on the strategy there? What are you doing to impact sales and, and margins, what are you doing for the potential impact of sales and margins on the Spirit Leaf Network? So they just acquired this and the expectation was, here you go, you got this retail space and it looks like it's gonna get hit pretty hard. The market in Canada is oversupplied right now and it's highly competitive. And basically he said, hey, I agree, it's a highly competitive market and it's hitting a saturation point in retail. Where And then this last part, it really stuck with me afterwards, bloodshed in the retail segment in Canada. And if you take and you Google bloodshed, anything related to blood, and uh, I did that. I went and I was like, well, how bad is this? It's going to be bloodbath, bloodshed. Uh, in the Toronto sector, owners are giving up because of not only com competition, but over regulation and there's just an oversupply with you know the point price is just people can't compete so you can see that there's 859 stores in Ontario Ontario just one province today and 163 that are located in downtown Toronto so this is in reference to the uh, alcohol and gaming association in Ontario so that just really stood out to me and you know I was like this was the perfect response and you haven't seen the price action really get excited and it's because this whole industry has taken a significant hit two-thirds of their stock price is pretty much gone from all-time highs we've seen all-time lows and SNDL it's reached a bottom of, like I was saying before, 61 cents, and people weren't sure with this being shorted if you know it was going to go down further. So I, I do want to take a look. Now, Alcana, this is their ticker symbol on Toronto, and this is in Canadian dollars, as you can see here, but it's sitting at $8 now. It's 80 cents to $1 uh, for USD. So uh, there's a conversion right there. They're sitting at $8 Canadian. They've had a low of 170. They're over a dollar is all I'm saying. So just really looks like a value buy and, and they haven't closed the deal. That's another thing. They haven't closed the deal and that's why the price isn't sticking. So it doesn't close till December and nothing has fundamentally changed besides the Spirit Leaf brand. And I want to talk about that. I want to show you what Zach's already given us, the CEO, he's given us a heads up of what the earnings are going to look like. And I'm not sure why 
we're not seeing more of a response. I'm going to tell you the timing on which, um, when, not which, but when I believe we're going to see an increase in this price. Now, short position squeeze activity. I know you're going to hear some people talking about short squeeze potential. I don't believe that this is a short squeeze potential action play that you're going to want to take. It's not another reason that I would add this to my list as a benefit because of the fee. This red line has the, the fee. You have to have a reason to get out of your position. A 1.6% fee is not going to make me rush or try and get out of my position. So this is a fundamental uh, piece of the puzzle that I believe people that are looking at short squeeze potential have to take in to consideration. You want to see a fee of 80% or higher and it doesn't last that long because that's what forces people to get out of their short position. Now, as we get closer to earnings, I do believe that people are going to try and exit their position if they are trying to short this, but it is under short potential uh, right now for people to continue pushing this price down. So like I said before, uh, 65, uh, you know, this is when it's far down to 61. I believe it's a buy now. Uh, so in Yahoo Finance, they have some revenue estimates. And I just want to make sure you take a look. And my pitch here is they're going to have to come back, given as much as this company has changed over the last few months, they're going to have to reevaluate this because there's just no way that this still sticks as proper evaluations for a quarterly basis uh, or, or a, an annual yearly basis. So with the reshaping of this business model, there's two pillars now. There is the flower business and liquor operations and then the investment operations, which has really enabled them to weather the storm of this oversupply of flour in the market. And they, Zach has just really done some phenomenal investments. He's really done well. And I'm impressed with the way he's spent this money. And for the price of one, you get two businesses. You've got a value brand, which addresses that analyst uh, question on how they're going to remain competitive. They're still going to have premium and they're going to have a value brand, which is growing. They have growth outlooks to grow in this sector. And then Alcana, is this a failed liquor business that they got at a price, a value price? We're going to take a look at that. But down here at the very bottom, you might not be able to see it on the screen. The last three months from June 2021 to August 2021, we've got this estimate, this wide revenue range of $161 million uh, for this Spirit Leaf brand. We've got $140 million of Nova Cannabis and Ore Flower. Uh, so this isn't going to, this whole section here, you could start from this section and go all the way over. This is not going to be recognized in Q3. So let's just focus right here. 161 million. Now, if I have this correct, if you go back and look at analyst targets, if this is what Zach is telling us that we're looking at, if this is a, a potential for anything close to what we're going to realize in the Q3 earnings, at the beginning of, I would say, November, the end of this month, you should start seeing volume coming back and expectations of this stock price uh, really go running up. It ran up last time. We'll take a look at that. But let's take a look at Nova. Nova Advantage, you can see that they plan on expanding. The colors just scream to value. And, you know, marketing aspects are all about color but disruptive focus lever build acquire and private label they have this growth strategy and you can see from the previous slide uh, number of locations 62 they plan to grow to 200 and to squeeze the competition this bloodbath that you were hearing about saying previously i'm not sure if alcana was a failed liquor business that they got on a deal but you could see Back in 2019, they had operating losses all the way up to the first quarter of 2020. Then we had this change in pandemic activity where 
people were shopping more at stores and taking it home. So you've seen in the overall Canadian market, there was a 14% increase, not specific to this business, but overall market conditions, there was a 14% increase. You've seen some net uh, earnings that were positive and we've got some big numbers here. I think we're going to hear some big numbers, but then we start to go negative uh, as they start to discontinue operations in areas that are low volume and low margin. They're discontinuing some operations, so there's a huge shift. Maybe they'll get all this straight by Q1 of 2022 uh, because they still have to close this deal, right? So there's some things that have to happen, but I would do my research if I were you. I'd go back if you want to take a position here and make sure you understand what the history of Alcana is because we're going to get limited information right now until we get an update uh, from the CEO and we hear uh, in this Q3 or anything else that they decide to release. So uh, legislation. Now, the Safe Banking Act of 2021, this it passed the House. You know, this is making progress. I don't see anything legislative wise that is going to be a catalyst for this stock at the end of this year just because of the emphasis on the infrastructure bill. I believe that comes first and the debt ceiling crisis isn't over. They push that to the right, you know, political things still happening, but a true catalyst, I still believe that there will be federal regulation passed and it's going to have an impact on all flower stocks, not just because they have a position in the U.S., but because it's just good for the industry as a whole. And you could see SNDLs taking a position as one of their pillars to finance. Uh, so really important to understand that they're using that money to leverage uh, where, where that need is at. So they are on the list of uh, non-compliant companies and they're going to have to see support. And I expect analysts to start reevaluating after Q3 earnings their price points, which I believe puts this over a dollar. So I think we see over a dollar in early November leading up to or right after earnings. And I believe we see support sustainably there to take this off of the list, which is on the list until February uh, 2022. So they've got to do something. If I think we'll know by the end of Q3 uh, if they're going to have to do a reverse stock split. I just don't see that happening. We've got too many catalysts between now and then. I believe that they'll try and push this as long as they can. Now let's talk about volume. So I don't believe that this is a short interest play, but I believe this is a, just a strictly volume play. According to Earnings Whisper, and this will probably get updated, this is one that could potentially have According to historical uh, data points, when they've done earnings in the past, they could have their earnings on November 11th. And that's why I'm saying at the end of this month, I see about two weeks prior to their actual earnings date, them starting to climb back up. So I believe that this, this is one that you need to keep on your radar as analysts reevaluate their price targets. Too much has changed in this company. So here's my final thoughts. I believe revenue is going to see a spike in Q3. We've got zero debt. We've got a great balance sheet. And we've got an acquisition on the horizon that's going to take place by Q1 of 2022. It looks like they're going to vote on everything in December. There's enough here that I believe we get over that non-compliance $1 mark and probably a lot of room for more. So that Spirit Leaf brand and that investor presentation, there's some numbers there that you should really check out for a three-month period. I mean, we're talking over $100 million. And they needed that retail space. They needed that retail reach. And now with Nova, we're going to be able to get everyone who wants that premium price. So we've got premium brand and then we got premium low price. So, I mean, this is just all coming together with an influx revenue stream from a liquor brand and then some really smart investments. I believe Zach has this company on the right track. This is a low price. This is the only penny stock I own. That's all I got. I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Feel free to give it a big thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. If there's something else you want to hear about more specific in this investor presentation or any one of these businesses, I'll do another business uh, deep dive into that specific area. Let me know in the comments below. Look forward to hearing from you. And that's all I got. I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Enjoy your weekend.